the law came for Ken Paxton. Then it turned and ran away. After nine years of pursuing criminal fraud charges against the attorney general, prosecutors now say that their case was weak. <laughs> you think? These people keep coming after this man, just throwing their daggers, and he's just like, Hah! force field, huh. Biden DOJ, force field, huh. impeachment, huh. securities fraud charges, huh. Welcome to Come and Take It. I'm your uh, sort of friendly, trusty tour guide, Sarah Gonzalez. Just kidding. I am very friendly until you cross me. And then, I don't know, don't find out. Uh, but this is an exciting, exciting time. Texas had a really, really great week last week. Let me tell you why. Um, usually when I come to you and I say, Ken Paxton had a big win for Texas, what that means is that, uh, you know, he's won another case against, say, the DOJ, the Biden regime, the state of Texas versus Joe Biden. And I'll say Ken Paxton had a great week in the courts. Well, this time, Ken Paxton had a great week in the courts last week, but it was for himself. Ken Paxton, victorious in court yet again. Now, this was a case nearly 10 years in the making, a decade, almost a decade of his life he had to deal with this. And this was a case that, you know, the left and the rhinos alike and alike they are, by the way, they would always use this every single election cycle. They would use this. They would come out and they would say, oh, Ken Paxton is a bad guy. Ken Paxton is under indictment for securities fraud. You can't vote for Ken. Pa he's corrupt. You, he's indicted. Don't you know you can't vote for someone who's under indictment? Yes. Yes, I can. Don't. No, you can't do that. Well, we heard this over and over again. I even had, I had family and friends who came to me and they would say, well, Sarah, I don't, I just don't know if I can, how are you voting for this guy? He's corrupt. He's under indictment. Guys, ugh, drives me nuts. Here's the deal. First of all, People need to learn what the word indictment actually means because the left and the rhinos, I'll just say the establishment, okay? The establishment has been very, very uh, cunning in using that word intentionally to try to associate guilt, all right? So the word indictment just means that a jurisdiction notifies someone that they are being formally accused of something. It has nothing to do with guilt or innocence. It's just literally a formal accusation of something. And it's a scary word, apparently. And so I would say, if, I don't know, I was someone with bad intentions, and I intended to weaponize the judicial system against a political opponent of mine, a really great way to do it would be to indict someone, accuse them of something, indict them, and then, oops, just not get to the case for like an entire decade. C continue to have delays, continue to not do anything about it, all while using this indictment against this person, all while using it to smear him in the court of public opinion during every election cycle, use it as some sort of a bogus reason for why this person shouldn't be in office for almost a decade, guys. Like, I cannot, I cannot overstate how crazy it is that this man has been dealing with this for nearly, his family has been dealing with this for nearly a decade of his life. So the whole indictment is bad. Just st like stop playing into that. Stop letting them use that word, wield it as some sort of a political weapon. Where have I seen this before? They're doing it to Donald Trump right now, right? That's all we keep hearing. <gasps> Anytime you say something about voting for Donald Trump, um, if someone were to say that, they would be like, oh, you can't vote for that person. He has 91 indictments, guys. Stop. Guilt 
or innocence. It has nothing to do with indictment. So stop letting them wield that accusation as a weapon. And so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the case itself, so here's what happened. In 2015, Ken Paxton was indicted. Nasty word, scary word. Ken Paxton was indicted and accused of not disclosing his personal financial interest in a firm that he had financial interest in to potential investors. And by the way, several different jurisdictions saw this case and took a total pass. They were like, nah, we don't, we don't really want to, we don't want to prosecute this. We don't see the evidence or whatever reason they had. They were like, no thanks. Well, Collin County finally decided that they would be the ones to take it on. And since then, you can imagine in the span of 10 years, there have been a lot of court maneuvers that have happened, a lot of presumption of guilt from those who, you know, hate conservative values at the end of the day. Just really nasty stuff that has happened since 2015 when Collin County was like, we'll be the ones. I volunteer as tribute. Shut up. So... Paxton dealt with this hanging over his head for this whole time, all while, I again, I, I cannot overstate this, all while, imagine dealing with something as serious as securities fraud charges where uh, the penalty could be like 99 years in prison, which, trust me, the left used all the time, I'll get to that. But imagine having this hanging over your head all while you are just securing victories left and right from uh, for Texas. I think an indictment is in order. Ima imagine having the mental capacity to deal with all of these attacks being levied against you all at the same time. And so finally, after all the delays and all the games being played in the court system, the prosecutors just decided they didn't want to go to trial at all. What? What does that even They had such a strong case against him. They didn't want to go to trial at all. And they ended up coming to Paxton's team and asking them to sign a pretrial diversion agreement that included absolutely no admittance of guilt because he wasn't guilty. And basically pay some restitution, probably less than you'd pay in lawyer's fees if you let this play out in a trial setting, uh, do some, agree to do some community service. And our case is so bad, we'll just go away after that. Oh, well, hold on a second. I was told by national news outlets, national reputable news outlets, the Associated Press, I was told that Ken Paxton was facing 99 years in prison. That's always what they'd say, right? Uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, uh, comma, who is facing 99 years in federal prison, in state prison, in what app, in, oh my gosh, he's gonna rot in prison because he has these security fraud charges. It was a slam dunk case, according to the media. What happened? They had so much overwhelming evidence on the man that they didn't even try. You gotta scratch your head and wonder, why did they tuck their tails between their legs and run home? And by the way, don't take my word for that, okay? Because I know there are a lot of people who say, oh, well, Sarah Gonzalez is biased. She's just, she's just overhyping how great their case was and the fact that this is significant, that they didn't even want to go to trial. Don't take my word for it. Take Texas Monthly's word for it. Who, by the way, those who aren't familiar with Texas Monthly, maybe you're outside of the state of Texas and you are not familiar with Texas Monthly. Let me just tell you, uh, they're not a conservative outlet, okay? They are very much left-leaning. And this is what they had to say in their headline. The law came for Ken Paxton. Then it turned and ran away. After nine years of pursuing criminal fraud charges against the attorney general, prosecutors now say that their case was weak. <laughs> <laughs> you think? These people keep coming after this man, just throwing their daggers, and he's just like, Hah! force field, huh. Biden DOJ, force field, huh. impeachment, huh. securities fraud charges, huh. Man, Ralph Waldo Emerson so famously said in one of his poems, when you strike the king, you must kill him. Now, I think an, a modern updated version of that was uh, from the TV show, The Wire, when they said, when you come at the king, you best not miss. Boy, that is true 
for our Attorney General, Ken Paxton. These establishment hacks don't seem to learn that lesson very well. They're like toddlers. You teach them, and you try to keep teaching them, and you're like, um, sweetheart, don't do that. You're going to get hurt. And then they get hurt, and you're like, do you see why I told you not to do that? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, won't do it again. Then they just keep doing it. They're not learning the lesson. They're, they have to learn the hard way, it seems. Bogus securities fraud charges, defeated. Bogus impeachment charges, defeated. But you do have to hand it to the establishment, okay? They are holding on to this Ken Paxton is a criminal to the bitter end. Just right on out into the sunset. Case in point, I want to play for you. This is a clip of Paxton impeachment enthusiast, Texas House Representative Jared Patterson. This is just, just two months ago, talking about all of these, you know, the security frauds case, and actually, you know, talking about, oh, I think Ken Paxton's going to jail, buddy. He He's even a flight risk. This is after he was embarrassed by the whole impeachment sham. Watch. I mean, look, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this year that, you know, Ken Paxton's on an island somewhere cashing out his campaign account and, you know, trying to skirt law enforcement. I, I think the best case scenario— You think scenario, he would take off? I mean, literally, you think he'd take off? He's facing life in prison. I mean, he's facing—I mean, these securities fraud charges are—I mean, it's real deal. I mean, but it's federal But you think the attorney stuff. general is a flight risk? I absolutely do. I mean, look— Oh, he's, he's facing life in prison, Jason. He's a flight risk. It's all so dramatic. Oh, what a criminal. It's the same BS rhetoric that we heard in the impeachment. We took this decision very seriously, and we wouldn't have voted to impeach unless we saw overwhelming evidence that the man was guilty of sin. Wrong. That and, you know, I remember, uh, this was probably seven or eight years ago, I talked to someone um, who I knew very well, who is very familiar with the case and you know with all of this and someone who couldn't couldn't really like couldn't talk about it right cuz you can't talk about stuff like that as it's going on uh, everyone in the world is under gag orders including uh Paxton's own lawyers and this person looked me in the eye and they told me when all of this comes out Ken Paxton is going to be totally vindicated and the corruption they keep accusing him of, it's all projection because the corruption that is happening is happening, is coming from the other side. It's coming from all of these people who have decided that Ken Paxton is their greatest enemy and they seek to destroy him at every level. That's where the corruption is coming from. They looked, I will never forget it. They looked me in the eye and they were just like, he will be completely vindicated from this. And... I knew they meant it, and I could tell by the tone of their voice that they knew what they were talking about. But, you know, the fact of the matter is this. We talk all the time about Donald Trump being politically persecuted, and he is, okay? The judicial system has been completely weaponized against him, but it's just, it's not new. And I think that that's what we lose sight of here in the state of Texas, because we want to believe that that type of behavior isn't tolerated here in Texas. We wouldn't tolerate a conservative fighter being politically persecuted by his enemies, both on the left and the right, by the way. They've joined forces. That's how much they want to destroy our greatest conservative fighter. Ken Paxton is like, unfortunately, the OG of this. Nobody, nobody realizes this. This man spent a decade of his life defending this, and the prosecution didn't even want to go to trial. It's absurd. And look, I would say, like, I want to celebrate the victory because it is a victory and it is a big deal, but they're not done. The establishment clearly wants him gone. He's too disruptive, and he didn't go down with the impeachment. They thought that he would run away and resign. He didn't because he knew that he wasn't guilty. They thought that he would go down with all of these securities fraud charges. He didn't. They thought that they could take him out, and they haven't. But here's the thing. The FBI has been watching these cases play out. Remember, these 
the crybaby whistleblowers who went to the FBI and prompted the whole impeachment sham. Remember, they went crying to the FBI, even though they admitted that they had no evidence. Let me get this straight. You went to the FBI and reported him for potential crimes without any evidence. Do I have that correct? Um, we went to the FBI and reported Please answer my question, yes our or no. belief that criminal activity had occurred. That was not my question. That Witness my needs question. to answer the question, yes or no. Did I ask it again, Mr. Vassar? Please. I want to get this straight. You went to the FBI on September 30th with your compatriots and reported the elected attorney general of this state for a crime without any evidence. Yes? That's right. We took no evidence. So you know the FBI is clearly chomping at the bit. They would love nothing more than to be the ones to take down Ken Paxton. And I just, don't let it be lost on you that these whistleblower, whistleblowers came to them in 2020. It is now 2024 and the FBI has done nothing. They sat back, they laid in wait, and they watched to see if anyone else, any other entity could take down Ken Paxton. Didn't happen. So I don't have confidence that they're just gonna let this go. So my prediction is, now that they have seen, they know their case is weak, they know their whistleblowers are weak. If it wasn't so, they would have done something about it a long time ago. They've waited, what is, four years? If they had a case, they would have used it to take out Ken Paxton. Ken Paxton is actively fighting them on every level. He is fighting the deep state and the Biden regime at every level. If they had the evidence, they would have acted on it by now, but just watch. Because I guarantee you, they will be the next ones to, to step up to the plate and try to wage war against our conservative fighter here in the state of Texas. Just watch. But just remember, they waited and watched all of these other cases play out to see if someone else could take Ken Paxton out. And look, if they want to be the next ones to step up to the plate and give it a swing, I guess so be it. But I have full confidence in Ken Paxton's ability to take those accusations down as well. Because all the man does is win. I keep, I keep having that. All I do is win, win, win in the background of my head as I'm talking to you about this right now. So look, I can almost promise the FBI is next. That doesn't mean that we don't celebrate this victory. Celebrate uh, any time that our greatest conservative fighter in the state is allowed to continue to work for all Texans, to work for the great state of Texas. But just keep an eye. The, the left is always notoriously 10 steps ahead of us. So I'm just saying, just keep an eye out for that to happen next. And we gotta be ready to bolster and fight back against the deep state once again, because if they take down Texas, the rest of the country is screwed. All right, so hope y'all will continue to join me in the fight and we'll see you next time on Come and Take It.